All right, welcome to 1-5, subtracting real numbers. Um, let's see, can I combine this with... Yes, I can. All right, so I'm going to do 1-5 as well as 1-6. Or should I just do it separately? I don't know. What do you think? Da-da-da-da. Da-da-da-da. Do-do-do-do. do 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 no, 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 no. Keep it as 1.5 and 1-6 separately, okay? All right, subtracting real numbers, that's quite simple. Um, you have to basically get used to having negative answers, okay? So, for example, I'm looking in the book. The first question is 1 minus 2. You get negative 1, okay? You have to get comfortable with that. Another one you have to get comfortable with is this one because you will see it all the time in your life because math is that much important, <laughs> So you have negative 5 minus negative 6 equals something we don't know yet. So what we do is when we have a negative, I'm sorry, when we have subtracted a negative, excuse me, you add the opposite, okay? When you're, when you're subtracting negatives, you add the opposite. Therefore, I'll show you what it looks like. I'm sorry, I will do the problem, and then I'll show you what it looks like. So if we have negative 5 minus negative 6, we're going to add, add, okay? So we're going to flip, and you're going to add the opposite, okay? So negative 5 plus positive 6 gives us a positive 1, okay? Let me show you what this looks like. Imagine this. We have a line. Pretty line, somewhat. All right? Over here is an arrow. Over here is an arrow. Okay? We know that we're starting... Okay, think about it this way. When you're subtracting, you're taking away from. You're basically... I'll just say it, and you have to trust me on this one. Um, when you're subtracting, you're going to the left. But when you're adding, you go to the right. That's just how math works, okay? Oh, Lord, I hate this. For those that don't understand, there is a glitch part in my tablet in this area over here. That's why I have to rotate the screen over because I can't even... I'm trying to tap right here, and I can't. So that's why I have to move the screen over. Anyways, go back to our section, our explanation. So, uh, negative, when you're subtracting, you're going to the left. When you're adding, you're going to the right. So imagine, and that's always the case, okay? So imagine we start at negative 5. So negative 5 is right here. And we want to subtract. So subtract means we want to go left. How many? Negative 6. If we want to go left, negative 6. That means we want to go left backwards. Okay? Because the negative contradicts the going to the left. Because going to the left already is going negative or subtracting. Okay? So if you want to subtract negative, you're actually just going to the right, okay? You're going to the right. So, when we subtract a negative, what we're doing is just, whoop, oh, wait, no, we can't go that way. So, we're going back this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, and one. This is our final answer. This will work every single time, okay? Oh, that looks like a three. Let me make it look like a one. Oh, wait, let me make it bigger. One. There we go. Cool beans. Got it? Got it. That is subtracting negatives. Um, and then do the rest in the check yourself. All right? Cool. All right. Now we have multiplying and dividing real numbers. Um, this one's quite simple. You just have to know your multiplication facts, and then they'll throw in a positive or a negative or a zero or a one or something like that, okay? Let me just go over everything real quick. Um, these are different properties. For example, if you multiply something by one, if you multiply, uh, let's see, triangle. No, 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 no. Oh, by the way, one dash... 46, yes. Do, 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 do. Take notes, my friends. Take notes. 
Identify proper, identity property, excuse me, identity property of multiplication, which is basically if you multiply something by one, it's going to be that exact same something. These are the same, okay? If you multiply zero times whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. The answer will always be zero. Zero times three, zero times 20, zero times infinity. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. take that back. Don't say zero times infinity because then my calculus professor will come out of nowhere and debate with you. Don't want it, okay? Zero times any number, don't say infinity. Zero times a fraction, zero times a square root, zero times uh, 83 million, billion, trillion, gazillion. It's still zero, okay? All right, multiplication property of negative one. So basically, what this means is it's the exact same one as the first one right here. So what that means is negative one times whatever is going to give you a negative blah, 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 whatever was in that box, okay? So whatever is in these boxes, it's going to be the exact same, okay? All right. So negative one times blank equals a negative blank, okay? All right. <sighs> Here's another rule. I think this was called the, is it the box method or the triangle? I don't remember. Somebody taught it to me a long time ago. Let's use red. And yeah, okay, cool. So, red. I said red. So if you have a positive, mer, a positive, a negative, a negative, and a positive, okay? The rule is if you multiply numbers with the same sign, the answer will be positive. If you multiply numbers with different signs, the answer will be negative. So, <sighs> therefore, if you multiply a positive times a positive, your answer will be positive. So, 6 times 6 gives us what? A positive 36. If we have a negative times a negative, it'll give us a positive, surprisingly. So, if you have a negative 3 times a negative 3, that gives you a positive 9, okay? Okay. Now, on the other hand, if you have a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive, the answer will always be negative... I'm abbreviating. No, I'm not. Ah, negative. There we go. Okay, positive times negative gives you a negative. Negative times positive gives you a negative. Okay, get it through your head. Three times negative six gives you a negative 18. Five times a negative two gives you a negative 10. Three times a negative eight gives us a negative 24. There we go. All righty. That's basically what you have to know about multiplication and division. And, oh, sorry. And it works the exact same way for division. You divide a positive by a positive, it'll be positive. Divide a negative by a negative, it'll be negative. I'm sorry, positive. Divide a positive by a negative, you will get a negative. Oh, I did this for one of my students. Let me write it out. Positive times positive. Negative times negative. Positive times negative. Negative times positive. Ugh, stop glitching. Okay. Positive divided by positive. Negative divided by negative. Positive divided by negative. Negative. Negative divided. Positive. There we go. All right. So, positive times a positive gives us a positive. Negative times a negative gives us a positive. All right. Um, negative times negative gives us positive. Positive divided by positive gives us a positive, and a negative divided by a negative gives us a positive. Positive times negative gives us a negative. Negative times positive gives us a negative. Positive divided by positive. I'm sorry. Positive divided by negative gives us a negative, and a negative divided by positive gives us a negative. All right. Um, cool beans. All right. Welcome to one seven. We're talking about the distributive property, okay? That's basically saying if I have A, and I have B, and I have C, okay? A, and a parenthesis B plus C, close parenthesis. Basically, what this means is you multiply this times that and this times that, okay? 
Okay, so A times B gives us just AB. A time, and then bring the plus sign down. And then A times C gives us AC, okay? If you have, let's do an example. If we have 4 and 3 plus X, this is simply going to be, what is 4 times 3, folks? What is 4 times X? What's 4 times 3? Hopefully you said 12. Bring the plus sign down. What is 4 times X? 4X. That's basically how the distributive property works. It does not get any easier or harder than that. That's pretty much it. The most complicated one you will see, I will give to you right now, is something like this. You'll have, um, I'm going to blow your mind, x plus y times x squared plus 2xy, oh my god, plus 2xy plus y squared. And close parentheses. This won't be the most complicated one, but it'll be one of them, okay? So, we have, let me make my marker smaller. X times X squared, that gives us X cubed. X times 2XY gives us 2X squared Y. X times Y squared gives us, bring the plus sign down, XY squared. Next, we do the Y. Y times X squared gives us X squared Y. Why? Notice that I'm lining it up so that the letters, variables, I'm sorry, are the exact same. They have the exact same degree, right? And a degree means it has the same exponent and the exact same variable, okay? So the y times x squared gives us x squared y. The y times the 2xy gives us 2xy squared. The y times y of y squared, of course, gives us y cubed. So this all means that our final answer, we just add it up like so and bring everything down. So we have x cubed plus 2. There's an imaginary 1 right here, so it's going to be 3x squared y plus there's an imaginary 1 right here. So that means that's going to be 3, come on, 3xy squared plus y cubed. Boom, shakalaka. That is our answer. All right, so let me zoom in. Um, you can see the way we came from here, came from here, got bigger, came from here, got bigger, came from here, got bigger and bigger. All right, cool beans. Next. All right, welcome to 1-8. Isn't this cool? I can add a, what's it called? I can add a f photo that I take in my camera roll to the section. And if you haven't noticed, I can write in that little spot that I was telling you is kind of glitchy on my iPad. I can write in it now, so I'm happy. Anyway, so these are all the properties of um, real numbers. What I suggest you do is pause this video, write all those down and your notes with the explanation as well as the examples. That way you will be not, you, excuse me, you won't be fuzzy when it comes to these later, okay? Um, I'm just going to explain it in ways that just make sense so you're just not looking like, uh, words and letters, why are letters in math, right? Okay, so... Um, think about it this way. If you have commutative property of addition, if you add, let me think, your left shoe and your right shoe, that is the exact same thing as your right shoe and your left shoe. It's basically how I, the easiest way I can explain. If you add your left shoe, let's say, let's say you got Jordans, right? If you add your left Jordan to your right Jordan, that is the exact same thing as adding your right Jordan to your left Jordan. All right. Scroll down. If you have, let me think, let me think, let me think. I can use shoes again. I'm going to use something better. If you have water and you have lemonade and then you combine those, that is the exact same thing. So if you combine water with lemonade, that is the exact same thing as combining lemonade with water. That's basically what that one says. Um, this one's kind of more involves more thought I guess if you have the associative property of addition not really it doesn't involve much thought because it's like you can look look 
if you have 6 plus 4 plus, I'm sorry, let me underline the problem. If you have 6 plus 4 in parentheses and then a plus 5, isn't that the exact same thing as if you add 4 plus 5 first and then add 6? It doesn't matter which one you add first when you're doing the associate property of addition because you'll get the exact same answer either way, okay? Just know what that means. Next one. Same thing for multiplication. If you have 6 times 4 first and then multiply by 5, that is the exact same thing as if you multiply by 4 times 5 first and then multiply by 6. You'll get the exact same answer. It does not matter, okay? So just know what those ones are because those are the easy ones. And then we have the identity property of addition. We covered this the last one. If you add anything to 0, you will get that anything, okay? So if you add 20 billion to 0, you're making or you still have 20 billion. If you, okay, that's the, huh, that's uh, this one. So now let's do this one. If you have the identity property of multiplication, if you multiply anything times one, you will get that anything, okay? So 12 million times one gives you 12 million. 12 million times two gives you twice of 12 million. I don't know why I brought that up, but oh well, you know that now. So 12 million times two gives us 24 million. All right, inverse property of addition. That basically means... If you add something and then add the opposite of it or the inverse of it or the negative sign of it, that's all what that means, you will get zero. So if you add, for example, I say this problem all the time for the students that actually know me. Um, if I give you $5, but then I take away $5, how much money you have? You have no money, okay? Forgive my poor English skills just now. Um, I have inverse property of multiplication, that's quite simple. If you multiply... Uh, a number by its reciprocal. Uh, reciprocal basically means you take that fraction. Let me show you what a reciprocal is, by the way. If you have 1 over... I'm sorry. Nope, 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 nope. If you have 8 over 3, the reciprocal will be 3 over 8. If you have 4 over 5, the reciprocal is going to be 5 over 4. Now, here's the doozy. If you have 9, the reciprocal will be 1 over 9. If you have... 15, the reciprocal will be 1 over 15. Guess what? If you have 1 over 8, the reciprocal will be just 8, okay? You're basically just flipping it. If it's already flipped, meaning it's al it's like a number by itself, like 3 or 5 or 13, uh, you flip it, and then it's going to be 1 over 13 or 1 over 8 or 1 over 5 or 1 over 3, okay? Okay. Those are what reciprocal means, and basically if you... Um, multiply those together, you will get one every time, okay? If you don't, you have done something wrong. Um, the symmetric property is quite simple. Basically, if you say that 2 times 3 equals 6, that also means 6 equals 2 times 3. If you have your left shoe plus your right shoe, that equals 2 shoes. Your right, uh, 2 shoes equals your right shoe plus your left shoe cool beans cool beans that's basically those properties and that's what you need to know for 1-8